on fourth ban. Did we not even get to fourth ban last time? Nope. Callista! We, we, yes! All right, we're further than we've been so far today, and that is progress. All right. All right, so Callista banned off as well, also seeing a lot of play in solo queue and champions queue right now. I saw some crazy attempts with different builds. There was some uh, pen lethality eclipse Callista build where your Q is doing like 600 damage. I don't, I don't really think that's going to be <laughs> the play, but you can see that taking away some of the power picks despite being on that big old ban uh, nerf graphic, still being given respect. So we've got three out of five marksman bands here in those first five bands. Okay, so Juani's gonna be the last one. So solo laner focus. Let's see how Isaris wanna start this one off. They're immediately going to grab the Graves. All right, Graves, if you've been following Champions Q, I know we've been talking about a lot. You're gonna hear a lot about Champions Q probably in the first day uh, because it's, it's some of the best data we have to go on, publicly available data at least. Uh, Spika dropped a 29 kill game. <laughs> Uh, going up against some of the T1 guys. And so people have been eyeing this champion as absolutely disgusting. I think you will see a fair amount of carry junglers potentially with Graves, with something like a Hecarim being uh, identified by a lot of people as being pretty strong probably. Did get uh, hotfix nerfed a little bit, but still with the changes that came through, there he is exactly on time. Look, makes me look like a genius, I love it. Uh, yep. The changes that came through, if you have not been keeping up with patch notes for Hecarim, the big thing that they changed was his Q giving more stacks to ramp up. Previously, it was two that you would get on Rampage. As you, you use that, you would kind of get the cooldown lower, the damage would increase. They have lowered the base damage, but put a third stack on and increased the scaling. So Hecarim has a little bit of this ramp up time in team fights where he becomes absolutely disgusting. They also gave him some resists on his W, decreased the healing a little bit, but made it so that he's much better about going in, getting into that fight, being a little bit tanky, gear and just helicoptering all over people. Exactly. The DPS can go through the roof here on this guy. So they're going to get the Hecarim. They're going to get the Gnar for the side of Mad Lions. Back over to Isaris. It's an Orn second pick. They're willing to just say, all right, let's scale it up here in the top side. You can have your lane bully. Doesn't matter. We're scaling for Orn. Yep. Uh, ADD's most played champion on the Orn, something he's very comfortable on, like you heard them talking about. A lot of uh, weak side play for him. He used to play in the LPL. He's used to playing on some of these high pressure situations, big stages and whatnot. So hopefully he can be this kind of strong backbone in the top side. And there's that misfortune that we were talking about, seeing a lot more play with some of the buffs that came through. She also got Hotfix nerfed as well. Her strut was a little overtuned, probably. A little strong. A little strong there, but uh, still a very strong champion in the current meta. And this matches oh, no. what we would sort of expect for Isaurus because they've got the scaling top laner and they've got a strong bottom laner that they can play through and play around and set up to have some successor. Yeah, uh, this is something that I'm very excited to see them bust out here for Mad Lions. This works well with that kind of Hecarim like you're talking about diving in there. Seraphine's one of the best enabling champions you can get. We'll see if it ends up going bot lane. That's where it's been favored recently, but maybe that will end up in Niski's hands. Well, this looks to me a lot, 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 Mark, like some grievous wounds will need to be on the menu going up against Seraphine healing as well as Hecarim's Spirit of Dread. You said that they gave him some resist. They knocked the healing down a little bit, but Hecarim's healing is still pretty incredible if he's in the middle of a fight, if he's able to get all that vamping done. Let's see how the second half of the draft is going to work here with the bands because we do have top laner, we do have jungler, and we do have what I am assuming is bottom lane carry drafted for both sides, which means I need to look at support bands and I need to look at mid lane bands with the LeBlanc and the Swain band away. All right, so Swain taken away from the Seraphine Swain combination. Uh, this is a disgusting combination that just results in mid-game meatballs that you can't kill. Yep. So no surprise. See that one taken out. The Azir did get nerfed, but it was one of Seiya's best champions. Uh, he was able to carry quite a bit in playoffs on that champion. He was very clean at it, too. Almost always felt like in the right position getting damage out. So they want to take that away. We'll have to see what else they want to pair with it. Probably not any of these that <laughs> Unforgiven is yeah. given that they already have Armut's Nar locked up in the top side. Yeah, he's hovering the Teemo. He's hovering his trademark Karthus there, a couple of couple of different champions. But it looks like Talia going to be the pick instead. How do we feel about this one? Uh, I like it. I mean, this was one of the champions that we were talking about uh, being one of those few that Niski played twice. It fits that roaming, pushing play style like you heard the analyst desk wanting them to go back to. Uh, it's exactly in that wheelhouse. And... Niski himself does play it very well, and it puts pressure now on Seiya and Grell to kind of try to control him, because if you don't, Niski will take over the game. He'll take over the game, and he'll set up El Yoya to just be able to rampage through these team fights as well. I've got my eyes on the mid-jungle combinations of both of these teams so much, as we've got Lissandra locked in. I assume this would be Seiya's pick here in the mid lane. Now I still need to see what that support is going to be. Where's the last one at? Isaris, how are we going to finish this bottom lane? Alistar. What will be paired up with the Misfortune? They have played a fair amount of Alistar. Uh, it does 
potentially work with this kind of engage, wanting to instantly blow someone up against these Seraphine team comp where you want to finish someone off. Amumu kind of fit up that similar idea where you want to go in, you want to kill someone. Uh, probably a little bit stronger in lane as well, um, whereas Alistar does need like level three and whatnot. Plus Amumu and Misfortune together, plus the Orn. This is the massive AOE team fight wombo combo. If you oh, manage yeah. to line all of those up and layer those one over another, it's going to be a bad time for the Mad Lions. But now, what is Mad going to put Kaiser on? Ooh, Leona, I like it. All right, Leona for Kaiser. He is at his best, I think, on these kind of supports that can go in, engage, pick fights, and really make a big impact, and they get him his Leona there to get that one done for him. Really like seeing this for him. Uh, it was obviously Nautilus I feel like he's most known for, but the Leona as well as kind of Nautilus Leona have been the engaged champions for a long time now. Will able, enable Elioia to be more of a follow-up engage as well. It sometimes feels bad to play Hecarim when you have to be the first one going in. And I like that a lot because Hecarim is not a direct tank. He's more of a drain tank. He can't be the one just eating all of that damage at the very beginning, get it bur getting bursted down before he's able to heal back up. So I like this composition. How do we feel like this is going to play out early? We've already talked about how Niski's going to want to roam around. We've looked at the other side. We know ADD wants to scale. Where are we expecting to see these junglers focus on? Well, so obviously for El Yoya, you still have that little bit of ramp up time. Some Hecarims actually do get involved early on in the map if they can find a good angle for their, their E charge to get a knockback away not, but otherwise it's, it's mostly sixes you're looking at, I think, for, for kind of both teams a little bit, <laughs> honestly. Uh, despite the fact that they are going to play very differently, both are actually more team fight comps than, than not. Benar can split a little bit more than the Orn and whatnot, but otherwise, you know, Seraphine and uh, Hecarim are very much team fight champions. Yeah, they want to group up. They want to be able to have those 5v5s. But we already talked about Orn, about the Misfortune, about the Amumu. These massive AOE ultis don't feel as good in 1v1s and 2v2s. They want to pile together. Yeah, so I think it's going to come down a lot for Isaris to be in these objective fights early, get there, get vision control, make the enemy team walk into you, make Mad Lions have to face check, drop you this insane wombo combo and instantly delete some members of Mad Lions. If you're unable to do that, you miss some of your engage. I expect Mad Lions team comms to actually be very good at still team fighting because you have that kind of sustained advantage. All righty, let's rock and roll. We're on to Summoner's Rift for the first time here in the world's 2022 play-ins. And we're already oh, no! going to get first blood. 44 seconds in, first blood over to Niski. Oh, no. Jelly just face checks. Kaiser gets stunned up. You have the Glacial Augment to make sure it was easy for Mad Lions to collapse on top of him. They get that kill. No Summoner's blown other than the Ignite on Kaiser. Jelly just kind of accepted his fate there. But it gave Niski, as the first blood, able to grab that tier right out the gate so already mad lions Man. feeling very good eu fans instantly breathe a giant sigh of relief you're feeling good first blood in 2022 worlds jelly gift wrap that one for a mark that is not the start they are looking for silver lining as you said at least no summoner spells spent there by the Isaris support as he got caught but man that is not a good look like you said the tier for niski just being able to have that stacking from moment zero in the lane get that stacked up get that to the max level that much more quickly ladam saying welcome to mexico have a gift have a first <laughs> blood enjoy your stay mad lions uh, and like you said this makes it so annoying to play against Nisky because if you play Xlea well, you can theoretically not bump into mana problems. But this allows you to play kind of brain off and spam a lot more through the first couple levels than you ever normally would be able to, given that you're going to start stacking that tier up right away. You have that bit extra base mana as well. So we talk about controlling Nisky, giving him extra mana to shove in Rome is not what you want. Exactly. When we think about players wanting to shove, normally just mindlessly spamming the wave is one of the best ways to <laughs> shove. So it makes things a little bit worrying. Also, remember, historically, when we saw Amumu first get popped Popular in the bottom lane as a support as Unforgiven immediately has to flash away. Let's see if they can take this one any further. Kaiser Ooh. having a flash out there too. Isaris bottom lane, 2v2, gets both flashes. All right, Jelly kind of making up for the uh, oopsie at level one. Gets both flashes with the double chains from his Q early on. Feels pretty good and uh, puts Mad Lions on the back foot a little bit early on. The Seraphine Leona lane was never really going to win against the MF uh, in shove and early pressure, but that does give you opportunities now potentially. If you can somehow break Sia out of the, the mid lane, meet up with Grell, maybe you can start making some dives happen in the bot lane if you're going to have pressure this entire time and no sun. And the thing that I was going to originally mention is after Amumu got those changes a while back to give his Q2 charges when he found himself initially being played in the support role, Leona was one of those champions that pro players were finding as an answer because when it came down to just the all-in, I'm going to get you type of fight, Leona came out on top. She's a tankier tank. Yeah, she's a tankier tank, but unfortunately, MF is a damage healer, damage gear. 
That was astute, Mark. There's some English I feel like right you're there, really brother. speaking to me here, bud. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man. She's going to do more damage in the early level one trade. The double up damage coming through. I think yep. they also hit too, so probably had strut as well. They maybe make it rain. Uh, I have to check. But either way, going to do way more damage than the Seraphine. And that's why, ultimately, you saw the flash come out of Mad Lions. Just the damage from Gavoto coming through. He has been uh, kind of the... X Factor, I guess I would say, watching Isaris games, uh, he has some insane team fights, both good and bad. He seems to always <laughs> be flanking, it feels like, no matter the situation. Um, and he is the one who can sometimes pop off or maybe have a bad team fight, whereas Say is the more kind of consistent carrier for them in the mid lane. Yeah, Gavoto in the LLA regular season got the most MVPs. Well, he tied for him. He got four MVP votes, tied up with Boogie and Adi in that count. So definitely the guy who can show up when they need him, but a lot of pressure is going to be on him on that misfortune. We know how much power this champion's ultimate adds to these big skirmishes, adds to these big team fights. So that positioning of his, when he decides to ha 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 press <laughs> R, that's going to be clutch. <laughs> it's funny that you did that when you're doing the hand animation of the ultimate, but no one can see that. So it was very funny for me at least to see the, the, the double guns there going off for you. Anyways, uh, for this game right now, nice bit of a freeze here, making it risky for Mad Lions. They do have that one ward and uh, they don't know, but Grell was camping in the tri -bush, got the reset, though. They didn't want to waste any more time. So a yep. little safer for Mad Lions bot lane here. And I think they are some uh, two members that have drawn a little bit of the attention for what was going on towards the end of playoffs for Mad Lions. The meta came through. There's that big change. Hyper carries being a focus. Bot lanes needing to win a lot. And Mad's identity being more about pushing and roaming in team play did feel like they struggled a little bit, both Unforgiven and even Kaiser a little bit. I saw him making roams that got him caught out of position, not quite playing at the same level that we all know he can play when he is this world-class support and hopefully yeah. uh, can stabilize from here in the spot lane. And that's why I like the Seraphine so much for Mad Lions. If you know your bottom laner is not the standout guy on the team, if he's not the superhero, if he's not the carry, then cool, put him on Seraphine. Create this death ball. Make this massive 5v5. And that's another thing that I think is going to be important when we look at compositions and we go through all these games, these eight games a day in play-ins group stage in this best of one format, ease of execution on comps, group up and death ball them, that's a good way to win. Yeah, and both teams have that option here. We were talking about, uh, despite the champions playing very differently, uh, both being somewhat team fight identity. Armit, not oh out of position here. He wants this fight. We got Ghost versus Ghost. Grell is taken low and Grell is taken out. Armit barely being kept alive. ADD's looking to get him now, but he won't have the damage. It's a disaster for Isabras. A double kill to El Yoya. Nice collapse from Mad Lions there. Armit starting that one off and having the fancy feet to make sure that ADD could not finish him off when Mad Lions collapsed on top of them. There's that roaming mid-jungle we were talking about, both Niski and El Yoya coming in, catching out the members of Isris in the river. Now up to a three kill advantage, a thousand gold lead, feeling very good just past six minutes into the game. Man, oh man, the early game has not gone the way that Isris Gaming was hoping for. That was so close, but still no cigar there in the top side. Ghost on both of the junglers to try to move around, get that extra speed to outplay one another. But it is the Mad Lions coming out on top. Let's take another look at how it went down. Yeah, you can see the invade was spotted out very early on. They knew that the members of Mad Lions were on the bot side of the map, so Grell thinks he's safe to invade. But uh, the fact that Arma had collapsed from top lane to get the initial uh, cutoff gave El Yoya time to collapse with that ghost. Like you said, charging in there, you know, it's not just a, a post-level six champion for Hecarim. You can scrap early on. It's just sometimes getting on top of people. But when you already have that kind of setup, very easy for him to get both those killed. Double kill, accelerating the Hecarim. And I think for a lot of people, El Yoya being arguably the best player on Mad Lions, is, I think for a lot of people between him and Niski. And El Yoya is at his best on these kind of farming, scaling, carry champions. He exploded onto the scene with a lot of the like, tempo-based junglers and whatnot. So this is an incredible start for him in his first game at Worlds uh, this year. Oh boy, Niski just getting all in here as the Ram comes flying through. Niski with a flash back to stay alive. Nicely done for the Mad Lions mid laner, but it does cost him both summoner spells to get away from. This is what they were talking about the analyst that's playing around Seiya a little bit in the mid lane, not hard committing to it, but Seiya setting that up, getting the initial chunk down to Niski and ADD roaming down from river had that threat from the ultimate. I think Niski didn't need to flash. It looked like he could have just stepped down, but I like playing safer than not early on at an international competition. Like, yeah, maybe you can just walk down out of that, but just don't be greedy. Learn that flash, stay alive. I mean, especially in the format for play-ins groups, because the top spot in either group just automatically gets out without having to play a best of five, and it's just best of ones that are determining that top spot, the smallest things that can determine a win or loss could end up being the difference between you playing a best of five or not, right? Yeah, absolutely the case. And 
like we talked about a little bit, Mad Lions playing what should, in theory, be two of the easier opponents for them in group stage here on day one, taking down, hopefully, Isaris for EU fans, and then uh, Istanbul Wildcats later on. A good start right now, and then, you know, have that little bit of momentum as you head into the tougher right. Eastern teams waiting for them. You got to be prepared. Got to get the reps in when you can get them. And El Yoya is going to get that early Rift Herald here for his team just a little bit after eight and a half minutes in as Kaiser and Unforgiven make their way back into the bottom lane. You can see Unforgiven having that ulti here on the Seraphine. That thing is massive gank assist. And it's really good against Misfortune as well. As soon as she starts channeling, you can fire it back, interrupt her, and take over the fight. Same with Leona. Just dropping your ultimate on top of the MF if she yep. ever tries to channel her ult early on in a fight will be something that to keep your eye on for Kaiser to do. Um, they did get two turret plates, though, during that timing window where they were grabbing the Rift Trail for Mad Lion's side. They're respectful for Unforgiven and, and Kaiser, making sure that there was no play available on the weak side, but it did allow some more gold to go into Govoto's pockets. Now up to uh, 3,300, just a couple hundred gold ahead of the Seraphine. So we've got dead even farm in bottom lane. About a one wave difference with an advantage for Seiya there in mid lane, but jungle and top are massive farm leads for the Mad Lions, and El Yoya and Niski are looking to keep the focus here on ADD. They know this guy can end up playing that weak side more often than not. They want to punish him for it. A little bit more damage will take him down, and Niski gets the kill. Seiya's made his way over. Looking to grab the first one. It's Grell getting on the board. Niski behind enemy lines with nowhere to go. He'll buy as much time as he can. They want to give the money over to Graves. They want to get Grell rocking and rolling. All right, two kills onto that Graves. Like you said, they were able to get the collapse onto ADD, but he did such a good job kiting that one out. Look how far under the top lane they needed to go to make that happen. Nice usage of the Bellows Breath by ADD to not get the initial flick back that Niski did land onto him, that unstoppable, yep. making sure that they had to go deep. And so he's playing very respectful here. They already have to run kind of between the two turrets. The fact that this did not actually cut him off, there's no flash on the Orn. So if they were able to land that one, he would have been dead much earlier. There you see the Bellows Breath to actually make sure none of the displacements stop him from walking down to the point where now they're under the inner turret and then it's bought enough time for the rest of Isaris to collapse. They get that kill onto Armit. They're also going to have Niski cut off here. No way out for Grell, who's ghosted up, like you said, to find that kill. El Yoya, the big brain jungle play, though. Call it. Plates. I'm not saving anyone. I'm getting some gold. <laughs> Well, that was a really solid performance there from ADD. Like you said, buying as much time as possible. If I know my top laner is going to be playing scaling weak side, I want him to be doing that. As now Armit finds himself under pressure. ADD going for that point blank R2. But Armit's there for the outplay. Now El Yoya is coming in and Grell's the target. Armit building up the Narbar, ready to go. Grell continues to kite, but it will not work. Say good night. Two more kills for the line. El Yoya had such a nice reset there. The extra gold that he got getting him boots to and sunderer on that back from the turret plates he also did not drop the rift herald on that initial push which gives him the faster recall to not be down tempo on that play so with the enhanced recall of rift herald can instantly go back up topside back up armit who still had flash despite what just happened in the top lane could have a really nice point playing flash and now blow open the entire top side of the map leading to almost a 2000 uh, 4, gold lead excuse me i think the regular season mad lions are here to play mark oh, this yeah. squad looks like they're ready to go they are jiving this is exactly El Yoya's meta, if we're gonna have these kind of carry junglers going off, you can see him 3-0-2, nearly 100% KP, only missing out on that first blood, which honestly... Yeah, that was a bit of a meme anyway. Come on, yeah, let's... Yeah. Uh, and you can say that all the plays that actually happened in this game have been kind of involving El Yoya so far. And I mean, that's what we set up as Mad Lion's game plan, right? They want to have Niski being able to support him. They're going to have Armit being able to support him. If El Yoya wants to go, everybody else just says, where are we going? And now, we're going mid. Okay, yeah. not a whole lot there. I mean, it's Lissandra, but hey. Hey, they, they tried. Uh, Lissandra, notoriously difficult champion to take advantage of in the mid lane, but does get them prio now. Not any focus onto dragons thus far in the game with the fact that the bot lane for Matt is not their focal point. But now that they have dropped top turret, swapping their focus down around here, we'll see if Isaris want to contest this. All right, Isaris, you're down about three and a half thousand gold. It's just a cloud drake. I'm not sure if they really want to go for it. The drake's already done. Let's see if Kaiser can find the engage. It's Jelly here with the front. He flashes forward, gets the ulti down onto a couple. Massive bullet time on two. And Isaris get the angle in a two for one. Niski gets away. Unforgiven still kicking as well. But nicely played there from Isaris. Nicely engaged by Jelly. 
nice counter engage is definitely the case where Mad Lions got that dragon for free. They were pinging out ADD and said, hey, the Orn's not here. His ultimate wasn't even available. They're looking at this as a 4v4 without the main frontline tool. So I think that they can just brute force through here onto Jelly. But the fact that Devoto does get charmed here, cleanses it off, gets this full ultimate, no interrupt by Kaiser. So the two members on the front line, Hecarim and Leona get absolutely destroyed by that. Gavoto is going to get a little bit more gold now, starting to get some in his back pockets, bringing that gold lead a lot closer. Bit of a misstep there by Mad Lions, underestimating the power of team fighting for Isaris. And hey, Isaris closed that 3,500 gold gap to a little bit under 2K there. So that was a pretty big swing in keeping this game within reaching distance, right? It was starting to run away from a little, from them a little bit. That pumped the brakes nicely. And, and MF is the main carry in this comp. Yes, the Graves will do damage, obviously, Lissandra and whatnot, but if anyone wants to be fed, it's going to be the MF. And she's up above 6,000 gold now, only a couple hundred behind El Yoya, the most fed members for Mad Lions. So this is a decent start for them. You can see going for the Kraken Sly Slayer DPS-oriented build. I think a lot of people prefer this over the kind of like pen build with Eclipse or whatever else you might go um, as a, a main carry when you're going to be frontline to hit the attack speed buff that strut gets is absolutely no joke and you can pump out that damage with the double up uh kind of auto attack reset that you have plus with the last whisper as the second item he knows he's going to have to shoot through kaiser he knows he's going to have to get through this hecarim in this gnar you can already see the winged moon plate in the inventory of el yoya those movement speed tank items are going to start coming out and the horse is going to get very scary very quick Gunning through that front line is not just an option, it's going to be a necessity. Absolutely. And Aloya, Aloya, excuse me, you see, not going for the uh, tier build where you end up with the uh Romana that a lot of people go when they're going full carry Hecarim. Yeah, they can grab that tier early on. Uh, does grab the Sunder and it's going into tank. Um, so kind of respecting this meatball identity that they're going to have when you get those resistances, the healing gets even stronger for you. Um, and you can see Isaris, despite that fact, going to try and contest this objective as well, it looks like. Okay, Mad Lions took the first Herald eight and a half minutes in. Isaris want to see if they can challenge here for this one, but it ain't going to happen. Where's the follow-up? Unforgiven thrown up into the air, but now they're trying to get themselves back out as Niski cuts them off. ADD bangs his head into the wall, and they bang ADD into the ground. Niski still throwing out a couple rocks, seeing if there's anything else to find. Seismic shove won't hit a target, but that's Mad Lions getting themselves a herald and getting themselves a kill to boot. Niski giving a target to Isaris split their focus there. It was a nice interrupt onto Jelly, potentially collapsing from the uh, Orin ultimate. That was Nicely done by Kaiser to stuff any engage. And then, once that happens, here, we're taking a look at it first. ADD starts this fight off with that ultimate, like we're saying. Jelly is, wants to get that follow-up, but the ultimate stun there by Kaiser stops any potential massive wombo combo. And once this wall comes in from Niski and kind of bisects the team fight, Saya decides, all right, we'll go for him instead. But Niski having his flash available is able to get out of there while the rest of his team focuses down ADD, win that fight. Nice execution there, as well as grabbing that Rift Herald, kind of making sure this game didn't slip any further away from them. Still in control. Yeah, and that was kind of the other side of the coin from what we saw at Drake, right? Mad Lions is there. Mad Lions is going to get the objective. Isris wants uh -oh. to do something about it, but now Niski. Oh, Niski. This isn't where you want to be, buddy. Nice shutdown. Kill credit goes over to Saiyan. Yeah, we were just saying, lost his flash in that previous team fight. Isris immediately targeted him down. Saya getting that lockdown. Big part of the kills so far, him and Graves, 100% kill participation. And Grell and Saya, I think you could say, if you hadn't watched, they are the two main... I think playmakers for this team in a lot of ways. Seiya has, I feel like when I watch him, a little bit of that like Bjergsen syndrome that people sometimes say, oh, well, he could be a bigger playmaker or whatnot, but he's almost always doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that does sometimes draw criticism when the rest of the team is doing crazy stuff and you're, and you're kind of that consistent member. He's also the most accomplished mid laner. I think it's 11 titles that he's had across the two uh, leagues when they merged together into the LLA. You know, like this guy has been at the top of his game for so long. You just expect excellence out of him. Yeah, he's been playing for an incredibly long amount of time. He's the only player left on this roster from 2021. And his coach describes him as like that X factor that this team would need to be able to get out of play and to be able to fight their way into the main group stage. So he's definitely somebody to keep your eye on if you're an Isaris fan, if you want to see what this team can do. A lot of it will center around him. He has his stopwatch. He has his Everfrost. These incredibly powerful actives that can set him up to make even more plays. Uh -oh. As Niski face checks into the brush, he was not expecting a man with a shotgun. He uses that stopwatch, but it won't do a damn thing. Grell gets the solo. Man, Isaris really picking on Niski now, catching out the LEC MVP in the side lanes twice in a row. This time, ADD was camping long range to maybe set up with his ultimate, but Grell was just so fed, and the fact that he got the wall bang right out the, the gate there, able to drop Niski so low, still no flash, got the stopwatch out of him as well. 
And that's one of the scary parts with a champion like Graves. Just because of the way the Q damage works, it's very high because it's very difficult to guarantee. So when you face check that brush and he guarantees it, you're immediately in a losing situation. Isaris are on to the Drake. Remember the Mad Lions took the first one, but they know they're a man down. They know Niski is only just now respawning. Even with Weaver's wall, he couldn't get there in time. Mad say discretion is the better part of Valor. They don't fight that one. Damn. Good line right there. Yeah. I probably heard it in the book or something. I don't know. No, you made it up, dude. Someone wrote that Cabin Flowers 2022 Worlds broadcast came up with it. That was really nice by Isaris. The fact that they got that pick, transitioned that down on second dragon, stopped Mad Lion's dragon taking. Mad just kind of hovered around bot lane to make sure that Arma could finish off that bot turret. He's kind of silently, this game, actually having an incredible performance. 2-1-4. and four, Has gotten a lot of uh, solo gold, up about 40 CS. He's that kind of... Uh, extra little bit of win con that Mad Lions has with this comp is the side lane pressure that they can have. Isaris has done a good job cutting that off with Niski, but someone will eventually have to answer Armin. And once again, Niski with a face check there, but he's got backup this time. The Hunter has become the Hunted, and Grell drops. El Yoya grabbing the kill credit on that one. Niski barely getting away with about 100 HP, but it's 100 more than Grell's got now. Dead for the next 20 seconds, nine to six in favor of the Mad Lions. It was a cute idea, I think, by Isaris, but underestimating how many members of Mad Lions were showing up there. There was the recall to cover the push by Seiya, gets caught out, and then uh, Niski had some backup coming in. Now El Yoya up to four, one and four, completed that force of nature. Not going to be taking very much damage from Seiya anymore. Uh, probably not from ADD either, but yep. luckily for Isaris, it's, it's Grell and Kaboto who are bringing most of the damage right now. Yeah, he's got cooldown boots, he's got force of nature, and his mythic is a damage item. So there's no armor at all on this champion. There's no Mountain Drake picked up by Mad Lions either. There's just not gonna be any Mountain Drakes in this game for a while until those start spawning here. But the thing that we got to remember is the Graves, the misfortune. Hecarim walking into a bullet time or a Graves combo, he can still melt. And that's kind of what I'm looking for Isaris to be able to set up and make happen. Yeah, that's exactly what happened in that dragon fight that Isaris were able to win. We'll see if they can start replicating that. So far, it feels like uh, these these fights have been very close. Uh, when we saw them, the Rift Herald one, it was better execution by Mad Lions. The Drake fight, uh, a bit of an overstep by Mad Lions. So they've been good about getting these dragons first, except for that one where Niski got picked off. I expect them to, with the advantage that they have with side lane in Armit, when they are able to make sure that Isaris is not getting a flank onto Niski or something, they should be able to get to these objectives first, I believe. Uh, though, Gavoto in the mid lane will have priority mid. It's very hard for the uh, Seraphine to step up and contest that one. Yeah, that Lord Dominic's regard second item fully completed now for the Misfortune as well. You can see the Black Cleaver on Armit as a lot of these guys on both sides are hitting those two item power spikes. And we talk a lot about gold advantages in League of Legends, but gold is just a pathway to items. And so especially if you're the team that's behind, you want to fight on the same completed item spikes if you can. And right now, it looks like both squads oh. want to posture around mid. Niski gets away there as Jelly tried to go in after him. Yeah, got the interrupt, I think, actually on the uh, the queue. So did not end up over the wall for Jelly, but still gets the flash out of Niski, which in two minutes will still be down when they get to this Drake fight again. Might make him a juicy target for all this engage that Isaris has on their side. Exactly, and he does not have any sort of an aggro drop. You can see there's no stopwatch. There's no Zonia's there for Niski. He has a cleanse that'll be up. Oh, no. But now, ADD, he's playing weak side again. The ignite keeps ticking the solar flare. Guarantees the damage. Armit flashing into get that Q just in case, but it won't even be needed. Tier 2 turret drops here in the bottom lane, and Mad Lions keep pushing. Yeah, Mad Lions catching Isaris in a bit of a reset there. ADD on the lane by himself. How far can they push this? Okay, they pop both big ultis of the bottom laners there onto El Yoya. They clear out the wave. They hurt the front line of the Mad Lions. They'll force them back for now. Nice stem the bleeding there for Isaris. Did not want to lose an inhibitor turret. No. Nope. Uh, right there. And I still like that play by Mad Lions, getting down, getting onto ADD. You saw how long he lived. He actually played that one fairly well. Almost got out and had to get finished off by kind of a Leona alt snipe. Yeah. But uh, because Isaris was just so out of position in the middle of that reset, they couldn't actually punish Mad Lions there. Mad Lions able to get more gold in their back pocket, get this back up close to that 4,000 gold lead that they were at before, heading into the third dragon. All right, third dragon, two big team fighting comps. I feel like being first to the scene is of paramount importance here. Absolutely the case. I think both teams are very happy to make the other team face check them. 
Uh, they have a lot of lockdown CC, both teams. If you go and try and walk into a Seraphine with the poke and then the, the charm coming through, forcing you to walk forward, the flickbacks, uh, all that stuff is, is very scary. Same case for Isaris. You have the Leona, or excuse me, the uh, Misfortune Ultimate to combo with the Mumu. You can see them still want to keep a little bit of vision onto Baron, not losing completely, but based off their positioning, the fact that Isaris has all their members up on the top side of the map. You have to think that they're not actually going to contest this. I can understand this thought process. ADD is two levels away from starting to turn on his items. So instead they're saying, you stay. Oh, excuse me, Mad Lion's up on the top side trying to get yeah. the Baron, Baron pressure down. Mad Lion's just going for the Baron. They're saying, all right, you guys had control over that bottom side river. If you want the Drake, take it. But Baron's going to go our way. Isaris, hanging around this area. Baron's at about 6k, Mad Lions pull off of it. It's so dangerous to hard commit to something like this for either one of these comps with the amount of AoE on both sides. But it still means there's Drake alive. Drake is still alive, but Mad Lions are not backing off the pressure. With the Seraphine in their comp, they can kind of keep posturing around this objective. Yep. Force Isaris over and over again to have to face check them. They have such good vision control here in the river, but Isaris are kind of calling that bluff, saying, we'll just keep taking turrets if you don't actually commit onto the Baron. Yeah, Isaris is doing a really good job here, just picking up two turrets for free in mid. It's not going to stop them from getting to the Baron in time, you would think. ADD and Jelly still looking for the chance. The Baron's at 3k. A little bit of damage over the wall. Here they go. It's bullet time! ADD gets the first kill. Isaris are going in, but Mad Lions have found themselves the Baron. El Yoya looking for any sort of a chance here as Seiya takes a lot of damage back from Niski and Unforgiven, but El Yoya is down. Niski and Unforgiven trying to get away. Jelly dies with the back end of the fight as Grell goes forward looking for even more. He'll take down the enemy mid. He looks for the enemy carry. Unforgiven gets away into the top lane, but Grell and Gavoto are looking Last for Baron. It. There comes that into the line. Unforgiven is the only one left, and he's gone. Isaris, get the ace. Isaris wipes the Baron off of Mad Lions. It was a last-ditch effort by El Yoya, ulting into the pit to make sure it was not a complete disaster of a play. So greedy by Mad Lions to stack in the pit against this team comp of Isaris. They get obliterated for it, though the game is not over yet because they were able to get that Baron. Here you can just see, sitting in that pit, such an easy two-man ultimate for the side of uh, uh, Gohvoto there to solve them out with Jelly. That forces, uh, you see El Yoya to go ulting back in, get that. There's a couple members killed right out the gate. ADD dropped as well, but Grell plays this fight so well, just staying yeah. in melee range the entire time, stacking up that grit, getting multiple Gore Drinker procs, Jelly giving his life up here to enable that chase down sequence and to actually wipe all these Barons off the side of Mad Lions. Gavoto with that strut coming in clutch, able to back up his homeboy. Grell finding all of these kills, just such an incredible performance on him in his graves. And this is a huge reason why he's got Ghost on the graves too. As you could tell, he was ghosted that entire fight. As he got the resets, as he was able to get those knockouts, he just kept extending the duration, and the hometown crowd is ready to go. Yeah, I was just about to say, it must feel so good playing on the world stage, acing the European representatives here, the fourth seed in front of your audience, scaring those crowd cheers behind you now, and the gold lead still about 3,000 in Mad Lion's favor, that Baron being smited by El Yoye. I can't yep. stress enough how important it was, because it's not just Huge. the fact that you get a gold lead, from it, but also stopping Isaris from continuing to push and then group up with this comp that they have would be so difficult to stop the siege. So Isaris did get those two turrets mid. They did get the ace. They did get themselves the Drake as well. You can see they've got that mountain on them now, so they're going to be a little bit tankier. One thing they got to be careful about, as you can see them backing away from where they were in the bottom lane, ADD's on the other side of the map with no teleport, so they really couldn't afford to get caught out there. They're going to back away for now. We've got four minutes until the next Drake and the next Bear are alive and it's Mad Lions once again pushing out the bottom lane. What do you want to see them do here, Mark? I like what they're doing right now, just staying aggressive, trying to get vision control and make these kind of pick plays happen. You do have a lot of mobility with El Yoya's speed, with Niski's ultimate to try and find people in the side lane. Armut is still very strong, very far ahead of ADD himself. So very possible for Mad Lions in these three intervening min minutes before they're forced to 5v5 again to look for pickoffs. Uh, Isaris has done a good job themselves of finding angles onto these, uh, Niski in particular, whenever he splits. So uh, for them, though, I do still kind of go back to that scaling angle we're talking about. ADD is hitting those Masterwork Horn items now. This is going to make them even scarier in the 5v5s as they continue to scale up. Yep. Uh, so I, I do think Isaris, I understand you are down gold, playing on the back foot a little bit here, trying to make sure that Mad Lions 
is walking over your wards, that you're seeing them coming, then you can stop the bleeding in, in these kind of side lane plays. And I'm glad you bring up the masterwork items, because if you're looking at Drake's, if you're looking at masterwork items, post-Drake buffs, and of course in the modern age of mythic items after the whole rework to how Orn worked, Every single Drake is worth about a thousand gold in stats for the team. Every single Masterwork item is going to give you about a thousand gold worth of stats. So when you're at plus one Drake and plus one Masterwork item, hey, that's plus 2k. All of a sudden, the game feels really, really close, and it could go either way. I'm really impressed with what I've seen from Isaris here, staying close with the Mad Lion. Yeah, it's, it's super impressive to see them the representatives from the LLA going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mad Lions so far this game. Uh, a lot of these team fights have been huge ultimates by Gavolto. I think he's having an incredible performance, like you said, one of the most important members of this team. I think going forward, Mad Lions have to find a way to shut him down in these team fights. It's been a couple uninterrupted misfortune ults right at the beginning. I think you do have to give Jelly some credit for locking down Kaiser or forcing him to use his ultimate in other ways uh, to stop him from instantly stopping Gavolto's ultimate, but that's something that Mad Lions will have to do a better job of, is stop getting put in these positions where they're up against the wall or their engage is getting stuffed and they're getting counter-engaged on. We're hitting big three item spikes all over the place, Mr. Zimmerman. We got an infinity edge for Gavoto. We've got a void staff for Seiya. Both of these guys, by the way, still no deaths throughout the whole game. <laughs> They're looking really good, the two primary carries of Isaris. Like I was saying, Seiya is someone who, when I was watching, I was just so impressed with his positioning. Almost never caught out, never not able to do damage, always contributing positively in team fights. And I think uh, he is, you know, for a reason, one of the best players in Latin American history. He's absolutely incredible and in a position right now to continue carrying with the Zonias completed, with the Everfrost, and just so many lockdown tools available for the Lissandra can win these fights for them. Oh. Let's see, we got Ghost versus Ghost here. El Yoya going in after Ground. ADD's out. He's going to have all of the Mad Lions coming up behind him. ADD's saying, all right, dude, you're on your own. There's no way I'm going to save you here. Grell trying to just continue the 1v1 against this horse. Normally, that's a matchup. A shotgun's going to win, but it's looking a little rough here. El Yoya has to back away. Holy moly, Grell's trying to fight him off. Grell El Yoya getting another devastating charge comes in. Grell staying alive still. He's bought so much time, but the space isn't going to get him a whole lot more and finally the mad lions run him down almost 1v3 by grell they're stacking up the grip making sure that elioya's damage was not that significant given that he did not go that mura mana build and could kite out the magic damage from the rest of uh mad lions there i wonder if add stuck around if they could have turned that there were multiple members of mad lions who kind of pulled off that play and assumed the three people up there were enough so maybe it would have been right. two kills going over but either way grell uh bought enough time that's always the scary thing when it's your jungler getting caught out is giving the baron and force El Yoya back, but Mad Lions still actually still uh, want to force on top of this after the reset. Yeah, I love the fact that Mad Lions are at least going to start this up. They're going to force Isaris to come answer. They know they have a 5v4 for the next 10 seconds, and the 4 is missing a jungler. There's no chance for a steal. Great Baron take from Mad Lions. Okay, I thought Isaris, with how strong their team fight is in this... Uh situation maybe could still force it but i understand without grell there that extremely fed member on their team did not actually want to take that risk so they just seed the baron over that pickoff does come through taking out the enemy jungler gives mad lions a window for their second baron of the game mad lions getting a big bonus with that one i also want to draw your attention over to armut who is now almost 100 cs above his opponent he has three fully completed items working on that fourth this Gnar could very easily be an X Factor, especially in a river fight on a mountain rim. Let's see how this Drake fight goes down. Scuttle Crab, the initial focus here from the side of Isaris. They'll secure that one for themselves. Look at Armin. Look at how charged up the bar is. He's ready to come in on the flank, but ADD is going to mark him, keep him zoned out. Mad Lions still keeping the aggro here on the Drake itself. Niski throws the Weaver's Wall through, tries to cut Isaris off from one another. Jelly goes in. Where's the follow-up? Kaiser's going to be caught here on the front, but Gavolto is finally pressured as El Yoya goes into the back line. Jelly dies first. Unforgiving and taking the kill on that one as Armin is causing a ruckus in the back as ADD looks to finish him off. It's already three dead on Isaris. It's a double kill back over to Niski. The Mad Lions roared to life and Grell can't do anything about it. ADD, the last man standing. Run, Orn, run! To see if he can get away, but at this point, Mad Lions found that back-breaking fight they needed. Armit's going to be left to stop ADD from getting off any sort of recall. Will get the teleport through. I don't think Armit has enough damage to stop that one. Nope. But the rest of Mad Lions have already turned to the mid lane, winning that fight. 
breaking it up, not giving Istris an easy single target to wipe off the map. They had made such a chaotic situation there that they could not actually finish off any of the members of Mad Lions. They grabbed that turret. Now they're going to grab this dragon to stop the dra uh, stacking for the side of Istris. Getting that gold lead up much higher now. That gold lead is 7,000 for the Mad Lions. They finally stopped Gavoto. They finally threw a wrench in the gears of the AoE team fight machine, and Mad Lions seems to have it figured out. Yeah, you want this kind of instant burst by the side of Istris, but you see Seiya trying to get on top of Unforgiven. Gets a lot of damage down, but the MF ult is just a little too short to actually hit Unforgiven. Doesn't finish off Kaiser, can't finish him off. On the backside of the fight, Armit, like you were saying, keeping Gavoto busy this entire time. Seiya was also getting uh, pinged down by Niski because he was not able to finish off Unforgiven, so they were just not able to find any one of these targets. Grell also not really in a position to contribute the way that he had in the previous team fights running forward. You can see he's still a force to be reckoned with, but yep. without the rest of the early kills coming through, the sustained damage available, the shielding, the healing, all the things that the Seraphine can do is just too much. All right, so what do we want to see Mad Lions do now as... Uh, Real quick, I do want to touch on this grab because it's Grell, the standout damage chart topper of the entire game, but overall higher values for the Mad Lions as a team. Their Baron's expiring. How do they close this one out quick and clean? I think that they're eventually going to go back to another Baron setup. They've done a very good job at those, aside from that first one where they all ended up in the pit, but I think they know better than that this time around actually have to commit to a turn and finding someone. Uh, I also got to say just Arma is so insanely far ahead. If you look at yeah. the gold, he's over 5,000 gold ahead. Just getting his Flame Horizon online now will continue getting further and further ahead of ADD. No one can stop him 1v1 in the side lane. And so you also have that in your back pocket as well, is that when you do start doing these Baron setups, you don't need to full commit to it. You can just pressure them and buy space for Armit to work 1v1 down on enemies in the side lane. He's already level 18, highest level in the game. No one else is really close. Niski, I guess, at 17 is the only other one on their side, but ADD three levels down. And one of the big things I'm looking at here, four item power spikes. They're online for Mad Lions. You've got the force of nature there for Armit. You've got the Rabidon's death cap for Niski. Even in the Seraphine inventory, Cosmic Drive, Void Staff, Seraphs, they've got a big advantage over Isservus right now, who are still sitting on components for those fourth items in most positions I'm looking to see mad continue to keep the pressure online yeah I like this they're they're hovering around mid they're they're keeping them forth there while Arm Armit has the pressure in the bot lane keeping Isaris confined to their base no way to push down and get wards in advance of whenever the dragon and the Baron come up both of them respawning at around the exact same time you know two and a half minutes out basically for both of them but with how much pressure Matt have, there's no way for Istris to set up, get wards for TP flanks if Seiya wants to try and come in from the backside of a team fight. And because he's the only one with the strength to really contest Armit, that means that one of your biggest damage dealers and setup for CC and engage won't be there. Yes, ADD, if he's the one grouped with the team, has plenty of engage as an orm, but it's not quite the same backline threat that Seiya could bring if he was the one who was grouped with your team. All righty, my friend. We have some troubling waters here for Isaris. They've put up a really good fight so far, but honestly, just the past couple of fights from the Mad Lions have been such different makers. I feel like the game's just been blown wide open. It's pretty hard for Mad to lose from this point. Yeah, Mad are looking good, but I gotta say, this is an absolute banger for a first game of yeah. Worlds. The hosts in Latin America and Mexico City, Isaris Gaming going up toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mad Lions. They're on the back foot now, but I think keeping this game closer than a lot of people were expecting, myself included. I thought Mad Lions, especially with the early kills that they got in the game, would just run away with this one, but showing a lot of toughness from Isaris here, but will be very difficult to actually come back from here with the amount of control that Mad Lions have. Yeah, we remember back, you know, to the start of the game, it was Jelly, the free kill at 44 seconds into the game. It was the two for nothing in top, where Armit just barely lived kiting him out. Mad Lions had a great start. Isaris was able to strike back well in some of those team fights. And I think some of that was Mad Lions overconfidence as well, yes. giving Isaris some moments where they were able to really show up and punish them. But now, Mad Lions has learned, okay, these guys aren't pushovers. We got to respect them. We can't just give them freebies. And they're playing in a way that's forcing Isaris to have to not get those setups they're looking for. They're playing in a way where they can push back and punish. All righty, well, Baron is spawned now. It looks like there's a bit of a disjoint between the, the graphic and this. We are actually gonna get it for free now for Mad Lions with this wall by Niski. Okay, Niski just blocks everybody off. It's so hard to get in there. The Baron is secured. Mad Lions got it. Where's the rest of the fight? Jelly wants to lead the way. The bullet time ain't gonna do a whole lot, but it's a one for one trade. Both supports are down. ADD stuck in the front. El Yoya cuts him to pieces. And now the rest of Isaris gotta try to get themselves away. El Yoya flies. 
flies at him like a bat out of hell. And they, there's no way out for Grell and Gavoto. Grella continued trying to get away from that one, but the horse is a horse, of course, of course. And there's another one, Gavoto, the only one left. But he won't be such for long. Arma can deal with him, no problem. Save the Meganar ulti just for style. Yeah, gets the last kill there onto Gavoto. Arma has come alive in these last two team fights, making it hell for the AD carry. Viscerous and Mad Lions should be able to close the game out from here with two nice Baron setups. Absolutely clinical in that last one, making for sure that Istris had to run right into them. Mad Lions get their first win of Worlds. It was a fun first game with the hometown champs going up against the LEC fourth seed, but the Mad Lions proved too ferocious, and they will take the first win of Worlds 2022. Looking very good there. El Yoya, 7, 2, and 10. Got so fed this game was an absolute force. Niski, despite some early game struggles, when he started getting picked off from the sidelines, 8, 4, and 8. Had some really nice Weaver's Walls at the end to make sure that these fights were very difficult for Isris to finish off. And there you go. A nice start for them already on the board. Isris did it.